Welcome to the audio laboratory. As I speak into this microphone and move it, you can hear that my voice becomes louder or softer, depending on where the microphone is pointing. It's not equally sensitive in every direction. Let's see what that's all about. This is the polar pattern chart of a cardioid microphone. You know, cardioid because of this heart shape. A polar pattern chart like this one describes how well a microphone hears in certain directions. Zero degrees refers to the sensitive side of the microphone. That's why it's really important to know where the sensitive side of the microphone actually is. So, I guess it's time for... Okay, an easy one to start with. Correct! This classic handheld ice cream cone of a microphone won't leave you guessing for long. This type is called front address or end address microphone. Correct! Most large diaphragm condenser microphones are side address microphones. Their sensitive side is not on the long end, but on the side of the microphone, usually the one with the manufacturer logo on it. Or some other marking, like this small golden dot. Ah well, that one was tricky. The Sennheiser MD421 looks like a side address microphone, but it's actually a front address microphone. This is its sensitive side. Ah, well spotted. It says right there on the microphone. People usually only discover this helpful reminder shortly after wondering why their guitar recording sounds so weird. So, always make sure that you know where the sensitive side on your microphone is. Back to the polar pattern chart. How do you read this thing? Well, if zero degrees refers to the sensitive side of the microphone and you want to know how much less sensitive the microphone is at any other angle, let's say 90 degrees, just follow the line and read the value. At 90 degrees, the SM58 is about 5 to 6 decibels less sensitive. Let's test this out and switch to the microphone's audio. This is 0 degrees, maximum sensitivity. And this is 90 degrees. By the way, it doesn't matter if I rotate the microphone along its 0 degree axis. The polar pattern is 3 dimensional. This means it's the same in every direction relative to this axis. And from directly behind, it's a whopping 20 decibels less sensitive. I said from behind, it's a whopping 20 decibels less sensitive. The cardioid polar pattern is the most common one, a little less sensitive on the sides, with a good rejection from the rear of the microphone. Now let's see how we can use that to our advantage. Well, you can strategically position the microphone. and even the sound sources to get a stronger signal of those sounds you do want to record and less of those sounds you don't want to hear. And if you record your instruments onto individual tracks with multiple microphones at the same time, for example one for the guitar and one for percussion, you want there to be as little spill from the other instruments as possible. A cardioid pattern is helpful for live recordings. You can close mic the instruments separately and you reduce the risk of feedback if you point the microphones away from the stage monitors. There are a few more variations on the cardioid pattern, like supercardioid or hypercardioid, with increasingly better side rejection, but at the cost of rear rejection. If an interference tube is added to the microphone design, this results in an even more directional low bar pattern. These so-called shotgun microphones are often used in movie productions. The unwanted off-axis sounds are rejected more effectively than on other microphones. And this allows you to keep a greater distance to the sound source while still capturing it clearly. When recording the actor's dialogue, a shotgun microphone is usually mounted onto a long boom pole. And a dedicated boom operator has to make sure that the mic is always pointed directly at the person speaking and that it never accidentally dips into the shot. But a microphone doesn't have to be directional. It can also be omnidirectional meaning it's equally sensitive in all directions. This is ideal when you want to capture more of the surrounding room or ambience. Or maybe you just have one single microphone, but you want to use it to record multiple sources at the same time. 
In fact, this is how it was done in the early days of recording. There was just one omnidirectional microphone in the middle of the studio and you had to place the musicians around it. If you wanted a singer or an instrument to be louder on the recording, you had to place them closer to the microphone. Omnidirectional is also ideal when your sound source moves around the microphone a lot. These small lapel or lavalier mics are attached to a speaker's clothing near their chest. They are omnidirectional mics as well, since you need to clearly hear the person even if they turn their head from side to side. Some microphones even allow you to switch their polar pattern. In this case omni, cardioid or figure 8. The figure 8 polar pattern is ideal when you have two podcasters or background vocalists facing each other and it's also used in stereo recording techniques. It's really important to know the polar pattern of your microphone so you can use it accordingly. But remember, even if you position a directional microphone away from unwanted sound sources, their sound waves can still be reflected by the walls and indirectly arrive at the sensitive side of the microphone. Don't expect wonders from a directional microphone. The maximum rejection is never 100%, but rather in the range of 20 decibels. But that already makes a lot of difference. That's it for this flashcard, but watch out for the next one. Don't hesitate to leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe and ring the bell. Beep, bunny.